Hey guys, this is Steve Brown from Secondhand Horology. Today we're going to be talking about a time grapher, what they do, and how they work. First thing I think uh, is important to talk about is there's a lot of talk about accuracy of watches. Um, mechanical watches are imperfect um, timekeeping devices. If you're looking for ultra reliable accuracy, I strongly would recommend going with a um, atomic clock regulated watch such as like a um, oh you know a Seiko this atomic clock regulated a citizen etc uh, but mechanical watches are a little bit more fickle of beasts having said that uh, we're going to talk about the accuracy uh, and how it's measured so the particular piece we're looking at today this is a a Helsin Blackbeard this is a limited edition watch uses an ETA Valjoux 7751 uh, there's three different grades of the 7751, and this is the high grade. So this is the high beat 28,800 amplitudes per hour watch. Uh, this is the top of the line as far as the ETA Valjoux 7750 is concerned. Um, if I said 7751 earlier, I apologize. It's a 7750. I misspoke. Uh, but the point remains, this is the high grade version. So having said that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this watch on this device and we are going to measure its timekeeping abilities. Just for reference, there's the watch. I'm gonna set it up, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have the watch in the stand. As you can see, it's got a nice little clamp there. I can set the watch in there. It's held in there pretty tightly and securely. Time grapher is currently not running. We're gonna go ahead and start it though, okay? So we're gonna just do a simple start right there. So now it's auto-detecting the beat. I have it set up to automatically detect the beat. So you notice right there, it's picked up what the actual um, amplitudes per hour are of this watch, 28,800, it automatically detected that. You've got beat error on this watch. you got your amplitude of 313 degrees and lying flat on its back. It is running right at negative five, negative six seconds per day. I have to think that to a certain degree, my voice is in fact interacting with this because what this is, is actually a uh, laboratory grade microphone that is hooked onto this pedestal that is picking up the inner frequencies of this watch. So it's actually picking up the, the noises of the balance and the escapement. Um, so the balance wheel and the escapement are being picked up by this machine. Uh, so right there, I think by anybody's standards, that's pretty good timekeeping, right at five, six seconds a day. Um, let's take this watch and go a step further and let's turn it. So now we're sitting at an odd angle. How did that affect things? Well, as we can see, it took the change pretty, pretty well. It took it to four seconds a day. Let's go back a little bit. Let's move it flat. So now we're right at three seconds per day. Pretty impressive. I'm impressed. So let's go ahead and tilt it on its side. We're getting a little more deviation here. By the way, when you're looking at a, a wash and they say adjusted to six positions, this is what they mean. They're talking about adjusting it to various positions that the watch may encounter during wear. So let's go ahead and flip it all the way. We're at 11 seconds per day. Still pretty respectable. Let's put it straight on its face. Straight on its face, you're going to notice it's actually going to start performing a little bit better. I did notice this with this watch. Uh, at 284 degrees of amplitude, negative one second per day. If you look at the graph, you can actually kind of see what's going on with the timing there.
and lying flat on its face, so you can tell this is a, so a chronometer uh, would be adjusted at multiple positions. This one clearly was, I would say, adjusted only in one position, uh, and that would have been face down, right? Like this, because that's the easiest way to adjust and time a watch. Uh, the reason I say that, because we're running pretty darn near perfect, right at zero to one second per day, a little bit of deviation, uh, very little beat error, very high amplitude, 313 degrees, um, of amplitude. So this, this movement is exceptionally healthy, right? So there she is. Let's bring her back. You can hear it kind of picking up the movement back to three seconds per day. So in a nutshell, guys, this is a time grapher. This is how it works. So when people talk about timing on a watch, this is what they uh, this is what they mean, and this is how you do it. I would say all in all, this watch is running exceptionally well. Um, in all positions, it had no more than nine to ten seconds a day deviation. That's very good. Um, if you're curious, uh, I can post in the uh, comments section. I can post a link to you know what is what is. What are the deviations for a uh, chronometer grade watch? What is considered acceptable by the COSC? Um, this watch is actually very close to actually being chronometer grade, which chronometer is uh, considered a lab, laboratory grade piece of timekeeping equipment. And as you see, this watch is really not affected much at all by positioning. So, hope you liked the video, hope you found it uh, enjoyable, and hope you uh, learned something new. Drop a line in the comments. Thanks a lot. See you soon.